It all makes sense. Nothing bad is going to happen to me here. As menacing as this place might look. The island, the ooze, those sea creatures. They're just defending themselves. Like a wild animal against an unknown threat. That's how they perceived the expedition. Like a threat. But I, on the other hand, I wasn't a threat. And I definitely wasn't unknown, was I? They seem to recognize me, as if I was one of their own. Everything seems so distant now, as if I first stepped on that white beach thousands of years ago. A full moon? It can't be. Yesterday was... Yesterday was a new moon. Did I lose track of time, or...? Maybe this place isn't subject to the laws of physics. That's the only explanation I can find for this surreal night. It's hard to believe everything is real. Maybe it isn't. Maybe I'll open my eyes sometime and I'll be back in our home in Englewood and... Everything will be as before. My perfectly ordinary life with Harry. My daily routines. My illness. That will be as before too. And then I'll need to shake off this strange feeling that I have now. A feeling that I don't really belong there anymore. And with there, I don't mean Englewood. Boston, or Newburyport, I mean... <sighs> How is it possible that the strange events of only two days on this island makes more sense to me than the life that I've been living for years? Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to our Let's Play of Call of the Sea. This is the last chapter. So we have arrived here at the Sanctuary. Well, Nora mused on about how much this has changed her life. Let's see, this should be the last step. If Harry's not here, then he's somewhere else, so... Let's see if we can discover what happened to him. So is this where you went, Harry? Or is this your last stop? We are definitely in some almost strange, otherworldly place here. We got the Aurora Borealis there. These stars are moving awfully quickly. Full moon, right? When just the other day it was a new moon. So yeah, very strange indeed. Well, let's see what we can find. We got a little camp up here. Another of Harry's letters. Let's actually start with this. Another camp. There was little more than a few things scattered about. My dear old pal, I never should have trusted Cass. I thought she cared about you, but she's just mad, obsessed with this place. I can't trust her to help me overcome the last obstacle. This door. I know how to open it. But what I have to do is mix my blood with the black ooze. Am I mad for even considering that? It's the only way we can be together. It has to work, right? All this can't be a coincidence. The ritual is made for the two of us, isn't it, Nora? I wish you could be here to... Damn it. I, th I have to think it over. I can't. I, uh, to tomorrow. Leave it for tomorrow, damn it. Stop writing. What are you saying, Harry? 
Don't you see what the Black Ooze does? What it did to the Doctor? Are you out of your mind? All right, so it's just him and Cass left. Obviously, their party has been dwindling, as we've seen. So what happened? Is Cass obsessed with this, and Harry's having strange thoughts about injecting himself with Black Ooze, mixing his blood to perform the ritual? A library? What are you talking about, Harry? I had a strange dream today. I was inside a vast library and gazed at vistas of another world. Panakotis? Nakotis? That's strange. Was the blood of these creatures some sort of catalyst? Blood and black ooze. Heavens, this dagger looks exactly like the one I have. An altar, dried blood and ooze. Isn't that the dagger Frank was attacked with? So you need to mix the blood and the black ooze using the dagger and this altar? Harry, what is this? It looks like the ramblings of a madman. Nora, must do it together. Change me, change me. All right, let's keep looking around here. This looks awfully like the altar we saw. Before we do anything there, I'm going to go over here. There's another tent. So that must have been Harry's tents over there. I wonder if this is Cass's. Cass, I think I have the answer. You have to go back home and bring Nora here. Leave now, please. Looks like Harry is inserting his hand into something, some kind of circular object with a fish on it. So I, I have to put my hand inside? He is yelling. It's not working. Interesting. Moby Dick, its pages are hollowed out and its shape is... Yes, the Shark Massacre, Chapter 66. Well, it's been hauled out here. She looks like she's hidden the dagger in there. Moby Dick, one of the most popular novels in all American literature, tells the story of Captain Ahab's unrelenting pursuit of a great white whale, a book about high seas adventure, symbolizing symboling allegory, and the conflict between heroism and hate. I'm sure you can draw some parallels between that and this story. Sleep in his tent. What a creepy photograph. Yeah, Harry sleeps with the gun. And looks like the music box right there at his side. Oh my, she sounds completely out of her mind. I've seen the future. Eternity awaits. Death awaits Harry. Dun dun dun! And a camera. A camera. It must be Cassandra's. What is this? This looks like the thing that Harry was sticking his hand in. Should we too? Let's try. Let's give it a try. Ouch! Oh! Ah. What was that? It looks like a tattoo, but it isn't. Those are my, my spots. They've moved. The spots on my hand have been rearranged in the form of some sort of symbols. Yeah. So apparently it hurts when it tattoos your hand with those symbols. Well, let's actually go back and read the log. We haven't had a chance to finish that off.
Here are the main rumors from the river down the mountain. Okay, yep. My god, I think Harry has lost his mind. He thinks there's a way to be like me. I hope he didn't do anything foolish, but his last few letters sound incoherent and unstable. The stone boat carried me through a subterranean river that flows into the sea. That night was strangely clear, and a full moon was shining weirdly in a starry way. Again, this island doesn't seem to obey the laws of physics. I got off at a dock of some sort on a large beach where the sanctuary is. I found another of Harry's campsites, if you could call it a campsite. There is one tent on each side of the beach. I found a circular stone with a fish head with its mouth open. When I put my hand inside of it, after a moment of intense pain, the stains on my hand rearranged themselves to form a peculiar pattern. Cass seems to be losing her mind. I'd rather not think about how the two of them got along here, or didn't get along. The device to access the inner sanctuary is only activated with blood. Blood like mine. Harry, please tell me you didn't do what I think you did. Please, Harry. You can't have sacrificed yourself. On the altar of indignity. Well, let's see what this altar is here, if that's what it is. Black ooze on a petri dish. My god, this syringe has traces of black ooze. What the hell were you thinking? I think it's pretty clear he wasn't. <laughs> These patterns look too familiar. Yep, the semicircle stones. Well, maybe you just cut you just cut your hand or something. Let's shoot, let's see. Oh, I really hope this works. Well, apparently it did work. All right, let's go inside. Well, we got some stuff on the ground here, a gun. Oh my goodness, and the gun barrel is empty. Are you sure about that? I mean, the other chamber is empty. Trail of blood. Someone was hurt. Yeah, there's a bullet casing down here too. There's a bullet hole in here. More blood. What's this? A woman's earring stained with blood. My God, Harry, what did you do to her? Shot her. In the face. If he's behind that door, I wonder which Harry I'll find. How much would be left of the man I love? And how much of the man who has lost his sanity in this place? Don't think I missed anything on these other steps. All right, let's head inside the sanctuary. Here we got some fish people, the black ooze. Up to the stars. Hmm, an eye and a star. Look at the stars, maybe. Hey, look at that. Constellation. The stars are aligned, forming a constellation that I don't recognize. That is not the same sky you can see from Earth. And if that's not the Earth's sky, where am I now? Must be all just a dream, Nora. It kind of vaguely resembles, like, Orion. The Orion constellation. Speaking of which, looks like there's some symbols on these doors here. Hmm, I wonder what this means. Looks like a constellation to me. Here's another one. Another door must look like it. Constellations and stars. These people seem to worship otherworldly gods. There's a mural here. They 
carried these people here to test them. Like a challenge of some sort. And immerse them in black ooze, it looks like. Where is this door leading me? A shining constellation. I better draw it. All right, so we got some more constellations here. Looks like four different ones. Harry, tell me you didn't inject yourself with the black ooze. Please tell me that you didn't do something that stupid. There's a gun on the floor with no bullets and a trail of blood. Oh no, what happened here? I don't understand. My god, there was a fight between Harry and Cass, and from what I've seen, it was really brutal. Harry has never been a violent man, but I hope he's okay. The altar left no room for doubt. I had to use that strange dagger I've been carrying with me ever since I received it in that package. After my blood touched the altar, the main door of the temple opened. Well, there were some papers over here. Some notes. Let's see what they say. Those stone statues seem to rotate with this switch. Some sort of creature, a pet. Howl. 90 degree rotation. Hmm, I wonder what this means. Bridges, dragons, gargoyles, animals. Looks like a dog or something to me. All these papers are riddled with incoherent doodles. Looks like he was trying to make star constellations and he X'd it out. Guess he wasn't making much progress here. Assuming that Harry made those. Well, what's on these uh, pedestals up here? Looks like a button. Ah, releases two stone wheels. I'm willing to bet this one releases those two. Well, if we look... Circular stones with strange carved symbols. Well, it seems there are buttons on these, but only one of them is illuminated. If we press it... These icons on the wheel are the same as the constellations I have in my hand. So if we press the illuminated one, it illuminates part of the floor here. It's a pentagon-shaped symbol with channels in its edges. What was it used for? So this is our next major puzzle. Ah, so what we apparently need to do is the symbols on those four doors there, we must have to create them in the pentagon here. The question is, how do we do that? Well, if we activate all of them, does that do anything? Apparently not. So, ergo, we need to find the correct combination. So what I'm going to do here is zero all of these. And we'll start over. So indeed, this is the main uh, puzzle of this chapter, essentially, and you'll be doing it several times, okay? And as you can guess, as we progress, more of these symbols will light up. So for the sake of uh, just keeping the, keeping the geography clear, okay, I'm always going to start here on this eye, looking towards the, uh, this mural here, this giant mural here. And we'll call each of these circular stones, like... Um, from this orientation, you know, like uh, top right, bottom right, top left, bottom left. So if we look at the symbols, hmm, 
Let's see. The symbol that is illuminated is the one that is currently on our hand. So we might be able to make one of these. The question is which one? Well, let's try this. We illuminated that from this perspective. Yeah, it seems like uh, this one right here. And that would be that door up there. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Looks like this bottom one right here. So it's uh, the bottom. Yeah, so it looks like we have a good shot of making the bottom right door over there. So we've got the bottom part of it. So we can illuminate that one. And maybe this one, the top right one. So the bottom left and the top right one we should illuminate. And there we go. Okay. Well, let's head on through, see what we can see. Another area, another mural. They took them to a, a throne room. That was the final step in the ritual. And chain them to a throne? Hmm, those look like stars up there, maybe. A large area over there. What an odd structure, riddled with nooks and crannies and endless stairways. Yes, very M.C. Escher-esque. That was probably intentional. To emphasize the sort of weird, surreal, dreamlike nature of this place. Looks like another area. We can't get to it from here. We have another stone circle that we need to insert our hand, get another tattoo. Maybe it only hurts the first time. also hurts. All right, we got another symbol on our hand. When I arrived on this island, I felt like I was trespassing. But now, I feel like this is where I belong. Well, it's good to know you feel at home here. So, let's see if we can't get those other doors open. And I believe if we got another symbol on our hand, then another symbol on these wheels should be illuminated. Yes, indeed. So what I'm going to do now is actually zero these again. And then we can try to figure out what else we can create here. So that one like there. Going back to the star. Let's see, so we got the bottom right one. Based on what we have here, this extra one, we may have a shot on doing this bottom left one because that part right there looks like the one in the lower left-hand corner of our hand, of our palm. So maybe... It would probably also be beneficial to number these um, these symbols because they appear to be the same on each and every wheel. So if we start from the left, we'll call this leftmost one number one, and going up around there clockwise, number two, number three at the very top, number four, and number five here on the bottom right. So perhaps if we do, let's see, number five here. And then, yeah, that completes that part. 
So we go over here to the bottom right one. Yeah, we do another number five here. Aha, there we go. I wonder if it might be easy if I could just zero it now and come back to a clean slate. There we go. Yeah. Door stays open. All right. So, let's go through here. Another chamber opened. Chamber of secrets. At that. This place is like a labyrinth. Another mural here. They were submerged in Black Icor. Like a labyrinth, huh? You remind me of the babe. What babe? Babe with the power. What power? Power of voodoo. Who do you do? Do what? Remind me of the babe. Harry seems to be on the brink of madness. But I... I don't feel the slightest hint of confusion. On the contrary, I feel my mind is more focused than ever. Ah, so there's the, uh, the beach where we arrived. And oh look, another stone circle. Again? Seriously? Yes, seriously. Ah. All right, another symbol, one with a sharp, a sharp apex to it. Looks kind of like this here. In the top left one. Well, we got what we came here for. Let's go back down and try see get an, see if we can get another door open. Keep seeing different areas. These are probably all essentially connected. All right, back at our starting position. The floor is zeroed again. So let's see, all right, so our third door. Let's see, we could probably do this top left one now. Yeah, so which would be a... Uh, that door? Yeah. So, sorry, this top right one, which would be the top left door over there. So what we need to do is... On the Bottom left one. Let's try number two. Bottom right one. Four here. Press number four there. So we got kind of the bottom half of that of it there. And therefore, on the top right wheel, we could do Yeah, we need to form another sharp corner here, so it'll be number two again. And that did it. All right. Let's zero the wheels again. Voila. Looks like we're going into another one of those gates. I have to get into the water. Yes, again. that's what I was about to say. Looks like we're going into the water again. Let's get this mural first. I can feel the torment of the thousands of slaves who perished here. So yeah, looks like we got a, a god 
or an emperor or some kind of leader figure there or is he is he shackled to that throne maybe kind of ascending to a higher plane of existence against his will perhaps at least to know if there's even like genders to these it could be an it a she a he an it a they i don't know all right here we go Presumably that one is when we want to get back out. Let's swim. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Yep, there we go. All right, another stone circle. Please insert five fingers and a palm. Oh, come on. One more time. Ow, that hurt. Again. All right, the last symbol is kind of a little squiggly little line there. All right, let's head back. I don't think there's anything else you can do here. You're blocked here and there. Can't make it easy. You can't just walk there. Nope, you have to get in the water. So, let's head back, see if we can't solve that fourth door. Alright, we're zeroed. So that one is this top left one here. Center ourselves here. So let's see. See, bottom left. Hmm, let's try number five there. That gives us kind of the bottom leg of it. And if we go to the top left, one with the arm sticking out there, the top left. I think it's number four. Yep, that looks like it. Okay, so we got kind of this uh, this left half here. And our last one, I'm guessing, would be at the top right circle. So let's go to the top right circle here. And it looks like we can use this one. There we go, number five. All the doors are open, but where is the constellation I need to open the throne room? Well, let's do uh, one thing at a time. Sorry, let's go back and zero the floor. Now, let's go through this. Go through door number four. Oh, there's a mural up there we do want to get. I think I can feel the agony of the slaves, their suffering, and the effects of their transformation. It's horrifying. Black and white figures. Alright, well, these look distinctly like the little, uh, 
gargoyle dog thingies in that drawing. Let's see here. Ah, they rotate them. So this one rotates the far left one. This one rotates the center one. Looks like there's one over there. I wonder if this one rotates that. Indeed it does. What happens if we push the golden button? Ah, makes a noise. Very good. Makes a noise. Raises the basalt pillars. Good doggies, or dragons, whatever you are. So that one moves the gray ones. And I wonder if, or the black ones, I wonder if this one moves the white ones. Ah, okay, moves that one. Center one. That one. This one moves that one. So we know that it raises pillars, but I'm guessing we're going to want to rotate this one around to the other side. We press this. Ah, yes indeed. Okay, very good. Now we have a path to the stone circle on the far side of the room. So we just need to go back, rotate this puppy so that he's facing that, that um, rotate this fella so he's kind of facing at the, uh, the 6 and the 9 o'clock. But wait, I wonder, there's a small platform there on the other side. I wonder if we can go there as well. Let's try that. Rotate him another 90 degrees like that. And rotate the center one 90 degrees like that. That should be what we need. We'll hit the button. Okay, there we go. So yeah, looks like we can get to the that side over there. Well, what's this down here? It looks like a photo. That's the creature I saw in my dreams. He's holding on to a gigantic black stone monolith. He is Father Dagon. Father Dagon, huh? Yep. Another sort of Lovecraftian cosmic horror being, if you will. Well, we have those white pillars raised, so let's rotate this one back to where it previously was, and then go to that circle. Okay, so that is the far left one. Hit it once. One more time. Or actually, three more times. Sorry. We only want to be facing at the six and three o'clock. There we go. Now that completes the bridge over there. Now let's get our final tattoo, huh? Luckily, there's no, like, time limit here on these pillars. We don't have to, like, rush across. Not that Nora runs very fast anyway. But <laughs> it's not like some Legend of Zelda thing, you know, where you hit the switch and the clock starts ticking. All right, here we go. Again? Seriously?
our fifth symbol on our hand. All right, that should probably fill out all five symbols on those stone wheels, and we'll figure out how to get that last door open. Go back here to center. There we go. This must be the final door. But before we do that, there is one little uh, secret hidden Easter egg here. As far as I know, there's no way to really divine how to do this. But if you go to the bottom left one, and oops, this is bottom right. Left from right, buddy. Yeah, I know. Go to the bottom left circle and hit number one. And the bottom right circle and hit number three here at the very top. This should give us something, an Easter egg to see. What was that? A vision to another world? Or a vision of the future? <laughs> well, that's another little Easter egg, um, a Raw Fury Easter egg. That was uh, some footage from uh, Raw Fury's, another Raw Fury game, the publisher. And that is, I believe it's uh, American Arcadia. Little Raw Fury Easter egg. All right, so this final door. Question is, we know all the constellations for these four doors. What's the constellation for this last door? Presumably, it's this one right in front of us. Could it be that, perhaps? The constellation up in the sky? Maybe so. Let's give it a shot, huh? So at the bottom left one, looks like we can do number five. At the, let's see. The top left one. We could do maybe number one. Yeah, it looks like it looks like the very top there. With the little arm out to the top left there. Yep. In the bottom right circle, I think we could do number four. That gets us the uh, that bottom right leg there. And the top right circle, it's looking kind of like number three. Sanctuary is open. It's time to find out what's waiting for me inside. Yep, so that's the final constellation. Let's head on through, shall we? Paul Goffin. There are more of those voices. What a disturbing mirror. Is it made of black icon? I, I feel like it is speaking to me. Oh, heavens. Looks like someone there was headed towards a, uh, blue uh, ring, halo or something. You can actually step behind it. 
What have we here? My God. Nothing that happens here appears to respect the most basic rules of physics. So as we move, the stones move and form a path in front of us. However, as strange as it may be, it does maintain a peculiar harmony. We seem to be headed down towards there, just below that giant idol or something. of a clock or a music box yes indeed it looks like we're headed down towards, towards some black ooze an awful lot of it Harry is that you is that Harry there sitting in that throne there on that chair there we have no way to get to him other than to fall into the black eye core here well, that's what we gotta do. No, 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 no! Don't tell me this is you, Harry. It can't be you. It can't be. No, no, no. Why did you do it? Oh my god, Harry, no! In the end, you performed the ritual. You poor fool. But why? I don't understand it. Why? You knew it. You knew it wasn't going to work. You knew the ritual wasn't going to work. That's... That's why you never sat on the throne. You didn't even perform the ritual, did you, Harry? But you wanted me to think that you had. You even left a lure to confuse me. But why? Huh. She mentions... Harry tricking her, essentially? Left a lure to confuse her? What really happened? We are in cosmic fantasy land now, I see. The only person with you in that sanctuary beach was Cassandra. So if you didn't die, it had to be her. So it wasn't Harry. He staged it to make Cassandra sit on the throne? Did she use the dagger to open the gates and carry out the ritual? You tried to stop her, but it was too late. She shot you with your own gun. Left you for dead, didn't she, Harry? Because Cassandra was ambitious and would stop at nothing to uncover the secrets here. The island fueled that hunger for knowledge. So, all the pictures she took, everything she witnessed, it was all Cassandra's doing? only for people like me but you refused to believe it until the island itself spoke directly to you haha falgarfen she is our daughter that's when you finally understood you understood what my fate would be if i didn't come here and carry out the ritual a slow and painful death ah so Nora was meant to come here, and that's why Harry sent her the package. Harry knew she would come, and he left her clues. So she could, she could fulfill the ritual herself. So that must be Sandra's body. It's 
Sully faked your own demise and left your glasses near Cassandra's corpse. Those same glasses you never take off. Occasionally encounter a bug where I get stuck there at the top step. Okay, so it was all fake. So that means Harry must be still alive somewhere. Assuming he hasn't died of his gunshot wound. So that was Cassandra holding that box. And you sent me the package from Dickie, Harry. Your picture, the key, the dagger. Another one of your scavenger hunts. All started with Harry. And I took the bait. You made me come to this island, the same island where you almost lost your mind and your life. The same island where four members of your expedition perished. Why did you deceive me, Harry? You said you would never lie to me. Why didn't you tell me the truth? Why did you do this to me? Yep, seems like a almost like a descent into darkness, right? We got the the strange glowing window panes, right? Darkness, stairs, classic. Because you knew that I would never accept my fate if it meant leaving you, right, my love? Not even if staying with you would mean a slow and painful death. So the only way to get me to leave you was to make me believe you were dead. And you chose to live a life without me, so I could be who I really am. That's why you tried to deceive me. But I know you too well, my dear old pal. We've had so many years together, so many moments of love, happiness, understanding, friendship, a whole beautiful. I know what you tried to do, but I can't let you make this decision for me, Harry. Either I embrace my fate and accept what I've always been, and leave you behind. Or I reject it, and return home with you to relish the time that my illness gives us. It's my decision to make. Okay, well, we now have to choose. Do we accept our fate and leave Harry? Or do we reject our fate and return home to Harry? Decisions, decision. It seems in a way the game sets it up so you can easily choose either way. You can rationalize either way as well. She came to this island with the purpose of finding out what happened to her husband, Harry. And... We could return home. Or she seems to be happy and free here, in a, in a sense, and we can leave Harry. So what do we think? What would Nora choose? Would she choose maybe going back home and slowly dying from her illness, perhaps spending what time she has left with Harry? Or would she choose staying here on the island, maybe? Living forever as a fish person. In a way, I'm somewhat compelled to uh, choose this one. Accept your fate and leave Harry. But again, you can choose either one. Let's see what this does. We had a really good life. But that's not my life anymore, is it, Harry? Not after what I've been through on this island. Not after all I've found out about myself. I can't fool myself anymore. I have to accept what I truly am and leave you behind. I'm going back home. That's it. Let's step into it. What a 
lovely melody. I don't believe I've ever heard more than a few notes. Until now. For years I thought I was sick. But the truth is... Seem to be stepping out into eternity here. I was homesick. My poor health. The pain. The suffering. It was all because of how far I was from here. Everything seems so far away now. No trace of pain, no trace of sickness. Nothing besides this place. It's so pleasant to forget everything else. Nothing matters anymore. I'm finally one of the thousands of minds connected to the I-Core. Connected with the Elder God. Let's go off to our fate, our destiny. Back in the water now. Living life, swimming free as a fish person. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. One, two, don't forget the harmony. One, two, three. All my life is empty since I went away. Skies don't seem to be so clear. May some angel sentry guard you while I stray And fate be kind to join us some sweet day
in your tender loving way I just want you only want you all the while may God decree I have you back someday oh how I miss you Each night and day I pray you're always mine. Sweetheart, may God bless you. Angel hands caress you. While sweet dreams you, dear old pal. I love you, Nora. And I love you, Harry. Even today, so many years later, I still doubt whether I did the right thing. I lied to you for the first and last time. And even if it was to free you from pain, suffering, and death, I deceived you. But I've paid such a high price for my deceit, Nora. Fate has punished me with a long and sorrowful life, with no other incentive than my work. Because that is the only thing I have now, my dear old pal. Okay, so uh, as a quick... Uh Side note, we are actually going to go back to where we had to make our final choice. And instead of accepting our fate and leaving Harry, we are actually going to go back, reject it, and return home. Let's see what that ending gives us. You were right about one thing, Harry. I would never accept my fate if it meant leaving you. I know who I really am and where I belong. I know fate has eternal life in store for me. But an eternal life without you is worthless, meaningless. So, I choose the slow and painful death. I'm going back home. Back here in the jungle. Right at the first door we opened. You staged this ruse because you love me. But true love is reciprocal. So I'm also making this decision because I love you. Our love is greater than fate, lineage, or... For all the pain I can suffer. Whatever time we have left, we'll spend together. When the time comes, it will be your hand that holds mine. So in this ending, Nora chooses love and our world over eternal life. And there's a ship standing by. Presumably Captain Hodgson is... Return to come get us. Boat is gone, but... And those beautiful blue eyes will be the last thing I see before I leave. Our boat is gone, but presumably he, he'll see us and he'll send someone to come get us.
So, you didn't find your husband on that island, Mrs. Everhart? I did find my husband. He wasn't on the island, though. But what have you been doing these three days? What did you find then? I don't know. The truth about myself, I suppose. And at the same time, the reason to go back home. I don't think I follow you. Have you ever been in love, Captain Hodgson? In love? You mean like in a romance novel? No, that's fiction, Captain. In real life, true love stories don't end with a wedding. They end with a funeral. And the only thing that eases that final moment of heartbreaking sadness are all the good memories lived together. Honestly, I don't think I've ever felt anything like that, Mrs. Everhart. But if you love your husband that much, he's certainly a lucky man. We are both lucky. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. One, two, don't forget the harmony. One, two, three. All my life is empty since I went away. Skies don't seem to be so clear. May some angel sentry guard you while I stray, and fate be kind to join us some sweet day. just want you only, want you all the while. May God decree I have you back someday. I'm fine, Harry, don't worry. I can keep going. <coughs> no, listen, let's leave it for today. You shouldn't make any unnecessary efforts. <coughs> really, darling, I'm fine. <coughs> you need to rest, Nora. Come on, I'll take you to bed. Even today, so many years later, I still doubt whether I did the right thing. In the end, it didn't matter. You returned home and forgave my deception. We moved close to the sea and had a few more good years, didn't we? Until you left me at one sunny March morning. I wish I could be reunited with you. But fate has punished me 
with a long and sorrowful life, with no other incentive than my work, because that is the only thing I have now, my dear old pal. Okay, so that was Call of the Sea, everyone. So I'm just gonna spend like a couple minutes here just giving a short review on my thoughts on the game. I think Call of the Sea represents something of a trend in the last, oh, 10 years or so of small indie developers making puzzle-based adventure games, similar in vain to Camp Santo's 2016 game Firewatch. The fantastical story, voice acting, stylized graphics, and focused interactivity with the environment operates in stark contrast to, say, the more grounded realism, pre-rendered graphics, and steampunk aesthetics of the, what I call the heyday of graphical adventure games back in the 90s, a la, like, Cyan's Mist series. Call of the Sea was a worthy first effort of Out of the Blue Studios. Game director Tatiana Delgado successfully blended the surreal and dreamlike elements of Lovecraftian fiction into the game without falling into the trap of creating a straight-up Cthulhu horror story. Additionally, Delgado specifically stated that Call of the Sea isn't a descent into madness, but a rise to sanity. Depending on how much you read into Nora Everhart's story, her experiences on the island, her physical transformation, and her fate can probably be interpreted as a journey of self-acceptance of one's identity. And it perhaps, in a way, echoes the physical transformation that transgender people go through when they're transitioning. So should you choose the ending where Nora stays with Harry and succumbs to her illness, it's an acceptance of one's humanity and her inevitable mortality and death. However, if you choose the ending where she stays as um, a fish person, then it's an acceptance of her alternate self that's free of disease and that can live forever. But in the end, that's just my kind of interpretation of the story's thematic elements, if you will. My major criticisms of, that I have of this game are its short length, its limited environmental interactivity, and the somewhat weak backstory. I do wish the game were a little bit longer since I can since it can basically be completed in like five hours. Or even shorter if you know what to do. The limited number th of things you could interact with in the, in the environment, specifically since it was largely only in relation to the puzzles, seems a little bit short-sighted. Like many others, I'm very much used to the Myst games and Riven and so on, where you have to take all these disparate clues and put them together to solve a puzzle and many of the clues are very well hidden in those games. In contrast, Call of the Sea not only makes it very clear which objects you can interact with, but also what clues are needed to solve the puzzles. So it's a bit of a crutch, and I think it's a little bit too helpful that everything is just written down for you in the notes. And only a couple of the puzzles really stumped me, like, you know, the mural puzzle in Chapter 4. But that's because the game was pretty vague on how you were on what you were supposed to do with that puzzle and how you were supposed to put the put the clues together. I found the romantic backstory between Nora and Harry to be a little bit thin. I mean, it, it kind of works, but I thought Nora's sole motivation for going to the island was to find her husband, and essentially instead she found herself answering the call of the sea as it were. However, I personally had difficulty in buying into Nora's motivations, her eventual uh, realization that the sea was where she ultimately belonged. So it's basically implied, but never fully explained, that she was descended from the original sea creature inhabitants of the island, and therefore she was basically returning home to her place of physical belonging. Hence why she felt physically better when she was on the island and more free when she was in the water. Still, I think it could have been fleshed out a little bit more both in the game and in the supplementary materials. I mean, yeah, we understand that she and Harry loved each other and therefore she had to go to the island, but okay, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know. 
Love is a strong thing, right? But personally, I wish I could have been more invested in Nora's journey and her transition and her relationship with Harry. All in all, I found Call of the Sea to be an enjoyable, if short, adventure game if you like these types of stories and this uh, type of artwork. Graphically, it has a stylized beauty to it that works, but it isn't really as immersive as other adventure games like from the 90s. The puzzles are satisfying, but the game holds the player's hand a little bit too much, and the world has a fairly limited amount of ways to interact with it and things that you can interact with. The story is passable, and you can read a number of thematic elements into it, but I found myself wanting more investment in it. It certainly is not a bad game, and I do hope that the developer continues to mature and produce more solid games. All in all, I'd say I would give Call of the Sea a solid 7.5 out of 10 for a rating. So, thank you, it was enjoyable to play, and I hope you enjoyed watching.